morning my soccer universe back to car videos since there were only three women's world cup games and i think i can remember all of them without having to have any major notes of course uh, learning the player's name at the women's world world cup to me is still a little bit of a challenge since i'm usually very bad with names but i will do my best uh, at least to get the main names of goal scorers and so on uh, I guess as soon as I start watching more, um, especially to the knockout stages, it might get a lot better. What am I wearing today? I'm wearing my wonderful Nigeria shirt. Uh, you can see me here. I'm packing it. Uh, by now you probably know all the results. Nigeria won. We'll talk about the uh, Germany won. France won. And I was kind of, what shall I wear? Uh, shall I wear really Germany? I was already threatening to wear Germany a second time in a row or shall I wear a uh, France and then it got to be yet yeah, Nigeria won let's wear this jersey uh, it deserves to be worn a lot yep Nigeria won against South Korea playing in those wonderful jerseys I'm so happy that the women's World Cup we already saw them twice while well, at the men's World Cup we saw the Nigeria jersey only once and that was worn in a game that was not as prominent, namely the one against Iceland, where Nigeria actually won. So those are lucky jerseys for Nigeria. Hope to see a lot of them at the Africa Cup of Nations. I honestly would love to to make this a winning jersey. <laughs> uh, yeah, yesterday I think it was a deserved win from what I could tell from the highlights. But the first goal was scrappy, it was an own goal by South Korea where there was a possible handball involved and look at the VAR, it was not a uh, hand, handball so the goal stood um, which yeah, is, is unlucky for South Korea to say the least um, yesterday's goals I think almost all, if, or let's say most of the goals that I saw yesterday uh, were of the type that yeah I have to say you see this maybe at the youth level you maybe see this at the women's world cup you don't see this at a men's world cup there were kind of a lot of very scrappy uh, goals with kind of you know you can tell and this is not to the detriment of the women's games it's just a fact uh, that there's not a certain athleticism is not there and that the players per se are smaller in stature so you know the goalkeepers are not two meters i mean it's the nate nay nature of things but again i think this is should not be used as a slide against the women's game this is actually a forte because the women's game i always like is a lot cleaner um it's a lot more technical yes it's not as fast as athletic and you gotta watch it not with uh, the expectations of a men's game but really for what it is it's a separate sport in a way um, the same way that you know women's tennis and men's tennis and men's tennis especially now that Wimbledon is coming up is dang 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 uh, ace 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 whereas the women's tennis there's a lot more finesse in there uh, which at times makes women's tennis especially women in Wimbledon I'd rather, rather watch women's tennis than men's tennis uh, I haven't watched tennis in a while except for the French Open final uh, this might be a lot for a while uh, the last game that I've, I'm watching who knows how it will go anyway so scrappy goal however the second goal for Nigeria that's one that I that I can fully commend it was a uh, counter attack quick I mean Nigeria is known for their quick uh, players really going fast pace forward running the goal goalkeeper acute angle get it in 2-0 for Nigeria sealed and delivered so we have a victory for Nigeria and if they can now pick up a point against France which will be tight um, then we talk about the next stage I actually we have to see how it develops but usually you need four points to be uh, quite secure of advancing um, if you have only uh, three you're always on the bubble it can work it cannot work um, the next game was Germany against Spain and I really wanted to watch it but I just couldn't uh, life circumstances didn't allow me to watch that, that one so I just saw the highlights uh, from what I could tell and from all of what I read because I think this was to me the most interesting game uh, as here there are two really two favorites involved um, 
and Spain actually dominated proceedings in Spanish fashion uh, in in the first half. Had actually a great counter chance that uh, that I saw in the highlights. That was just going wide of the goal. Um, honestly, against Germany, and it's the same thing goes for China. You have to make your chances because Germany is gonna punish you. It's true for the women. It's true for the men. There is something about the, the Germans. They, even if they're not playing great most of the time uh, they will get to you and that's exactly what they did. I mean there uh, was a sharp header by Pop directly to the goalkeeper who kind of defends it to the side and then there's Debritz and Spanish defender hustling for the loose ball right there and Debritz just slides into it and can put it in, in, into the net. Um, very scrappy goal and I have to say this was the one where I really thought um, I don't think you see it that way in the men's game because the goalkeeper then usually would already um, charge towards it. it it looked weird to me yeah? it was a really scra scrappy goal uh, German in the second half ac actually had uh, chances uh, for, a, for, for a second goal uh, but yeah, it remained that way. Spain just couldn't find the breakthrough and Germany takes control of their group. I think with uh, winning against uh, two arguably strongest teams in the group, uh, Germany is now set to uh, win this group and get out of it very uh, rather unscathed. I think even Spain uh, sitting at three points. I mean, if they get a point against China, depending on what China does today, but uh, you know, as I said, four points usually see you through. So there goes that. Uh, and then the evening game was France against Norway in Nice, completely sold out arena. I think uh, spirits are high for the French team. And I don't know if it was only me, but I actually wanted to see another statement by the French team, especially after the 13 nothing by the US women. It really seems that those two are primed to meet in the quarterfinals. Um, I seriously hope they won't, but I think everything is pointing to that. Um, now we can argue is France the second strongest team at the World Cup? They are hosts and simply for that reason uh, they probably should be considered the second strongest, if not the strongest at the World Cup. I mean, they surely have to play uh, stronger opponents than the US uh, have to so you know we always have to take that into account and Norway in women's soccer is a force even without Ada Hegerberg I don't want to talk too much about it because everyone's talk, talking about it if you, if you listen to the uh, women's world cup just she is voted the best player in the world and she's not playing for Norway for whatever reasons that are entirely hers but it's a big deal um, it would be similar if Messi wouldn't be playing for Argentina, something like that. Anyway, uh, it is the game, you could see that Norway is a decent side. They really uh, gave France some trouble and France had a hard time breaking through the Norwegian uh, defense. And on the other side, um, were, the Norwegians had their small chances as well. Can't push the highlights. Uh, the breakthrough for France came actually within a minute of the kickoff of the second half, where a uh, nice cross going into the box and cover taps it in. Um, and you thought, yeah, now France is on their way. If it wasn't for, I think, in the 54th, um, that Norway has an attack, cross comes into the box, and Renard pretty much without any pressure on her. I mean, slight pressure, but she wanted to tap it into the um, outside to have, have a corner and put it into her own goal. I mean, it's an absolute freak sequence. That's, you can also see in the men's game. I mean, I've seen stupid stuff like, like that even more often. Uh, now, you have to remember Renat is probably one of the two best central defenders in the women's game. So, uh, that was really a complete blackout by her. 
it can happen uh, and you know France then had again trouble getting getting and it needed a hard challenge uh, in the penalty box way you could see it was a foul uh, from I don't know region of the French you know I can see why it's I can see why it's given um, I know there was probably no intent uh, in that, but you know, intent doesn't count for much any, anymore. A foul is a foul, whether it's intent or not. And so let's make it a penalty, I think in the 78th, 77th, some, some, something like that, slams it home, and France gets the second win. Now, six points ahead of Norway. Uh, given that Norway is, has beaten Nigeria just by the transfer property, I I cannot see anything but France winning this group. And as I said, France at the US collision course quarterfinal. It's gonna be a huge game. And you would say this this sounds like a final. Uh, and I will agree, but we know that so often if those constellations happen that then exactly uh, the team that wins that one had to put so much into that game that it, they don't end up winning the final. So but that's all far in the future. Anyway, let me know if you watched any of the Women's World Cups games, uh, what your thoughts are on, the, uh, on these, especially on the three games from yesterday. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.